tightrope walkers, figure skaters, someone's little brother spinning around in a chair. What do all of these things have in common? Well, in order to accomplish their particular goal, each needs to adjust their moment of inertia. But what is moment of inertia? Moment of inertia is just another name for rotational inertia, which is essentially an object's resistance to rotation. It's the rotational version of mass, since mass is what determines how hard it is to move an object in a straight line. But rotational inertia also takes into account how the mass is distributed relative to a given axis of rotation. The more mass there is farther from the axis, the more it will resist a change in its rotation. A complex three-dimensional object is made up of an infinite number of masses at various distances from any given axis of rotation. So to find the rotational inertia of the object, we would need to somehow add up all the mr squares. This is done using calculus. In this way, we can come up with formulas for the rotational inertia of common objects based on their shape. But how does rotational inertia affect the motion of an everyday object? Let's take a shopping cart. A shopping cart has a relatively low rotational inertia, making it easy to turn and maneuver. But as the groceries start piling up, the increasing mass raises the cart's rotational inertia. You could try to increase your leverage by rotating the cart around its other end, but uh, this isn't how carts are made. If you position the groceries closer to you though, you've decreased the rotational inertia and you can now more easily turn, though less easily see. Now, the mathematical explanation for this involves not only rotational inertia, but also torque. Torque is the rotational version of force, and the amount needed to rotate something is based on an object's rotational inertia and the desired angular acceleration, or acceleration in a circle. With the shopping cart, we decrease the rotational inertia in order to decrease the torque required to turn it. But sometimes, for a given torque, we want to increase the rotational inertia in order to decrease the angular acceleration, or slow it down. Consider a tightrope walker. As a tightrope walker, I'm constantly fighting the force exerted on me by gravity. But isn't gravity just pulling me down? Well, consider the fact that falling off the wire is really just engaging in a rotation about the wire. In order to resist this rotation, I have to increase my rotational inertia. This can be achieved with a balancing pole, which effectively increases my rotational inertia by putting more mass farther away from my axis of rotation. This way, for a given torque exerted on me by gravity, I'll have a lower angular acceleration. Any small wobbles about my equilibrium position will happen more slowly, so I'll have more time to respond and restore my balance. And there you go! Once you understand the many interesting ways in which things rotate, and the factors that affect their rotation, you'll realize just how important rotational inertia is, whether you're a wire walker or just an everyday shopper.